Hello and welcome to the Cybertronian Exchange. Today we're going to be reviewing the Earthrise Cybertron, uh, War for Cybertron Scorponok and the DX9, uh, I'm sorry, the DK19 and DK21 uh, DNA add on kits. Now, the add on kits uh, will go in a second video that will be part two to this video. The first video is going to be dedicated strictly to the Scorponok figure. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to my boy Tony. Uh, who sent me this for my birthday and uh, man that's a huge gift dude and I just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate you and I love you brother thank you very much um, with all the sappy stuff out of the way I'm going to move the camera around and we'll get with the unboxing and review in total I have not opened these at all so you'll get my original first impressions right off the bat I'll be right back All right, and we're back. So I've already slipped the tape on this side. And uh, again, this is the first time opening it. You'll get to see it as I go. And uh, I'm gonna do my best to do this without instructions, but uh, don't think less of me if I have to divert to instructions. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive in. It is a big box. Instructions just hit the floor. Let's set this out of view real quick because I guess some people like to see the box all the way through. So uh, there's your front. He's got Prime in it, and you got uh, a couple other figures in the background. And uh, on the back, of course, it gives you the toy breakdown and the, the modes that you can expect, and the head, and then the headmaster, or the headmaster, or the headmaster. Um, so yeah. Pretty basic stuff. Get that out of the way. Uh, he also comes with this chunk of map that is part of Cybertron. And I really don't collect these all that much. I don't have all the pieces to put together or whatnot. Uh, just, you know, I, I know it was fun for some, but it wasn't a big deal for me. Uh, but I try and keep all components. I don't normally keep my boxes. Um, so, uh, but all other components I will be keeping as far as like the map and stuff is concerned. But if it's part of a box, I didn't keep it. So, all right, let's bring the guy that we all want to see back in. So I don't know if that's in frame or not, but uh, I'm sure as we start unpacking it, it'll all be in frame. Let me see here. Yeah, you can't see the top half of his torso. <laughs> so I will do my best to, let's see. Oh yeah, that's, that's not gonna work. I'll have to adjust the, camera angle um, for all that so there's a slip down below and uh, that carries his shield That just moves in and out. Nothing special, just pincers. There's a chunk of his tail that carries his stinger. comes with uh, blast effects and a little red lens to view the map and uh, Skylinks came with more of those than than that that's kind of blah but yeah, clear. we'll get to it all I believe this is his head he's got a little hole peeky boo those two so, yeah pretty good actually I did that that sculpt quite a bit let me let me get this closer I'm gonna have to move around he's such a big bot our format won't normally be like this because he's so huge we're just kind of stuck with it but uh yeah man that's 
that's a lot of sculpt work on that thing. Look at that. That is that's beautiful. A lot of care went into that. So there's his other head. So we'll get into that transformation stuff later. On to getting this massive dude out of here. So aside, we have another slip right here, and it's got more parts in it. Looks like these are armaments with guns. They are. Let me slide right out. This is packed really nice. Everything's nice and tidy. We'll get a closer look at these guns. We'll toss all this stuff down here. So, I'm just going to look at one of these real close. It's really nice. A little bit of marbling in the plastic. But, I mean, overall, I mean, it's they're nicely done. You got a little bit of paint there, and the rest of it's gray molded plastic. Of course, the typical hollow on the other side, which I understand they do that because of material cost and all that good stuff. But uh, that doesn't bother me as long as you don't see it. You know, as long as it's not like some figures, the back of their legs are hollow or the inside of their thighs are hollow. And that it just really takes away from the figure when you're trying to pose it in dynamic poses. But uh, again, personal opinion and uh, all that good stuff. So we're going to finish taking these pieces of stuff, packing stuff off. And then I want to change the camera angle so that we can get the whole lot in view. And then we will start going through it. So, I think that is all of it. Pop that on. And, uh, looks like this tabs in right here. And I think it tabs this way based upon the hollow nature of stuff. It makes sense that it tabs this way. So, um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how all this goes in a minute. All right, we're back. So, to get to this point, as you can tell, I had to open up the instructions. Uh, and it's simply because I needed to know where accessories go, and I'm sure I will use them more. So, because um, the accessories that came in the box weren't attached, I had the tail reversed. So I'm going to flip them around real quick. Uh, here's a storage place for those pincers that become his arm shield. Uh, we'll go through that here in just a second. Uh, and the tail piece that was on here. Uh, <laughs> I put on incorrectly. Uh, because I thought it made logical sense that this was smooth and not hollow that it went with this that that is wrong So you have two tabs here and these two tabs actually fold all the way up into these two slots right here And you just push them in and they, they snap in fairly solid, solidly and then uh, 
this being smooth on this side, this just tabs in like that. Now you have two holes here and here that peg into these two pegs right there and there. And uh, it holds in nice and firm. And then these two pegs go into those two holes there to hold him in, hold that in to him. And then you have the two cannons that tab in here. That was pretty uh, self-explanatory. Now for the shield component, the shield component actually um, comes off, holds in there pretty well, by the way. And then your leg pieces come off. And they actually tab together, like so. They kind of like scissor in there. And then these four pegs tab into these four holes back here to complete the shield that now attaches to his arms. These two pegs should go in here, and these two pegs will go into these two holes here. So, and that completes as well. I was wrong. I thought these two pegs went in there, but they can. It moves everything back further, so these don't actually tap into anything. Uh, so I guess you can do it either this way and move it, the pinchers forward, or you can do it further back where these tab in here. But when you do it further back and they tab in here, these two pegs rub on here. So, and you can actually do it kind of in the middle where these two pegs go in right here. So it kind of seems to have a varying degree of adjustments that, well, when you do those two there, then these two kind of peg in. So maybe that's the original intended port, but it looks like it accommodates either way. So it just depends on how far up on the arm you want it to sit. So I'm gonna set this aside. Um, these blast effects can tab in pretty much anywhere. Uh, let's throw this over here. You know, he can take hits, uh, stack them, or do them individually, however you want to do it. Uh, let's see. Of course, coming from the guns. You know, pretty much anything you want to do with it, you can. Um, now for the figure itself, I'm just going to go through it top to bottom, pretty traditional to what everybody else does. Um, so, right off the top, of course, we've looked at the head as far as detail is concerned. It is beautifully sculpted. Uh, he does have some down head movement. It's about there. It's cut out and uh, ratcheted, so he looks down, he stays down, and his chin tucks underneath the collar right here, um, which is really nicely done. And uh, as far as looking up, he can go up some, but it untabs the back of his collar. Uh, pretty much levels all you can get. He doesn't, you know, he's as big as he is, he probably doesn't need to look up very often. Um, but he can look down. And he gets a full 360 there. And you can move his uh, antenna. Actually, come off so if you want to take them off you can but uh, you move his antenna I don't think his visor goes anywhere I'll have to look more into that when I get to the instructions and all that so there's the head um, visor looks like it's molded plastic uh, silver paint uh, but the main pat plastic is gray and purple orange paint the orange paint does not match the orange inside the collar the orange inside the collar down here in this mechanism is molded plastic. Um, so uh, moving from there down to the torso, uh, this is molded gray, molded purple, but then this is painted. And this blue and orange is painted. Of course, the tampo, this silver um, is painted. And this gray down here is all painted uh, as well as 
in the crotch area that's all painted with molded purple plastic. Looks really good. Um, on the arms, of course, we've already covered the guns, but uh, this is molded green plastic, molded purple plastic, and then you got paint, the, the gunmetal gray paint and orange paint. Um, this in here is just molded gray plastic. Um, you get 90 degrees out of the elbow. You get all the way around for the arm. The shoulder is actually, instead of being up at the shoulder, it looks like it wants to move. Um, and that may be a transformation component because I can see this whole section wiggling, but it actually moves right there. So you get out to 90 degrees on the um, shoulder movement here. And then uh, the way it's all cut, it's flush. So your bicep swivel is just above the elbow. And uh, then the hands themselves or the, the claws have individually articulated fingers right there. And then the thumb opens up. I mean, it gets to a wide range. Um, but, like, you can't get the fist. So, like, to get to here, you know, you can't hold your arm up like that. Uh, and it's also articulated here. So there's not a wrist swivel, so it goes out to the side, and that's it, um, with no wrist swivel. So that, it would have been nice to have one, but due to how it's molded and, and designed, um, there isn't one. And I wouldn't say that's a huge loss. Uh, that's just me making note of it more than anything. I'm not complaining by any stretch of the imagination. So um, I'm just going to put this back on for now. Now for the waist, uh, you do get a waist swivel, and uh, which it looks like you can get all the way around. So yeah, that's nice. I don't see any kind of ab crunch, so nothing allowing it to come forward, which is fine. Um, I mean, even their MP Starscream doesn't have an ab crunch. Is weak sauce if you ask me, but that's a review for a different time. The legs, upper thighs, purple molded plastic, and painted gunmetal gray areas, painted silver. Uh, and I, this blue is like a very metallic um, turquoise. I love this blue. This really, and the orange, those two colors really pop together on this figure and really stand out. And I love how they transition it from the chest all the way down into the legs. I really wish they put a little dab of it into the arms. Um, I think it would have really just kind of tied the figure together entirely. Um, but there's so much sculpted detail on this thing. All these little uh, turbines right here on the side, you know, look like um, the back end ports of a jet. I say turbine, it's not turbine, it's just an exhaust port or whatever. But uh, no, it's all the way down, you know, it's, it's painted in all this blue and it just looks so good, but I wish wherever the blue landed, like they did it here and they did it here, but they did not do it here. They painted the silver first and then they did the blue over it, which really gave it a nice pop. Down here, you can tell that it's molded plastic and then just the blue over the molded plastic. So in this color and this color match, but it's the blue is more dull. So I wish they, they had been a little bit more cohesive with that. But again, nitpicks, that's just me pointing stuff out that I see. So moving on to articulation, legs get more than 90 degrees out to the side, you get 90 degrees front, 90 degrees back. So uh, pretty nice, you get a thigh swivel right there, all of it's ratcheted really well, um, forward and backwards ratcheted, there's no um, tension joints at all, it's all ratchet. Uh, the knee is more than a 90. Um, like double hinge, so you got a hinge here and you have a hinge here. This is purely for the transformation, I imagine. But I mean, you get 180 degrees, which is unheard of as far as um, Transformers concerned. I don't, I don't think I've seen anything like that. 
uh, in quite a while. I know Fans Toys and uh, X Transbots and a few of them get really close with the third party figures, but really for Hasbro to pull something off like that, that's pretty impressive. And I, again, I understand it's because of the transformation, but one of the things that I really, whoop, really like is uh, the detail that they put in the knee joints. Um, they really thought it out. And I feel like this character got a lot of love from the designers. Um, now, one thing to mention is while manipulating it, the head has come loose and the collar has popped itself loose. So I don't necessarily think this is a tolerance issue. I think it's just, it's a weighted figure. It's heavy, it's big. And as you manipulate it, things are going to act differently. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're maneuvering. Try not to get frustrated with it. It's just nature of the beast and it's a big beast. So um, the other thing to uh, show is of course the ankle rocker. You get probably about 15 to 20 degrees ankle rocker. Um, you do get a toe tilt. Uh, and does it, maybe? I don't want to break it, it's, it's bending. It looks like it wants to have um, a foot tilt forward. I like the little details in here, but it looks like it wants to rock forward here, but it doesn't quite do it. So maybe that's just detail. I don't know, I'll fidget with it more later. Maybe I'll discover that it is supposed to move through transformation. So, but with all that being said, you get some really good dynamic poses. And again, I'm not being, he's, his joints are not weak. I'm being uh, heavy handed with him. Um, just because I don't really cut my figures any slack. So, uh, he's big, and so I want to move him like he's big. But he really gets the poses in there. Um, I feel like he really looks the part. They did a wonderful job on him. Backside, he's got a little bit of paint back here. Um, these flaps move out of the way for uh, leg movement and so forth. Lots of sculpted detail. Even on the underside where most of this is hollow, there's sculpted detail through here. There's sculpted detail on this, on the back side of his legs. It looks like vents and on the side of his legs. There's tons and tons of sculpted detail. Like, God forbid the person wants to paint this thing. Oh, bless your heart. Uh, you're going to be there a while. So, but lots of detail, lots of stuff. So, um, now, we've gone through the articulation in his robot mode. I think it's time we move on to um, transformation. So I'm actually just going to play it safe with this one and use the instructions right here next to me. And, uh, just because I mean he's a Titan and well, why not? So we're going to start off with the head. Instructions ask you to pull the head off tell you or show you or instruct you because they're instructions and then looks like this part here folds up and looks like it covers down over the face so it, it swivel hinges out over the face which is really cool because look at that they got eyes under there. Can y'all see that? Let me get this a little closer. Man, I hope y'all can see what I'm doing. That is cool. It's got eyes up under there like that. So. That's cool. I don't know if the eyes fold under or not. But, uh, there's a screw. Oh, sorry. There's a screw under there to unscrew and take the visor off if you so desire. Um, that's pretty neat. So anyway, back to transformation here. Maybe it would be better if I was over here like this. I don't know. That's hard for me to do. So I'm going to sit here and I won't continue on like I was. So that comes down. And then let's see. Flip it 180 degrees, so now we're looking at it like this. That pops up, legs fold out. All the way down. And then, 
let's see. Whoop. Don't fall on those. Those do pop out. These are really loose. I'm just going to take them off for now. So what you got to do is you got to untab the arm from the side right there. And so the arms come out. And then the biceps hold down. Hand comes out. Hand comes out. Chest collapses down. Now it says for this that folds flat and then these actually that came off attach back here using this slide right here. So let me make sure, let me get where I can see it so you can see it. Use this slide, goes in that slot right there. So it wants you to attach both of those back here. Just like that. So that is if you don't want to keep them on the arm. I say they fall off the arm pretty easily. And uh, of course they fall off the back pretty easily too. Maybe the safer place is on the arm. So I think they can go in either location. Um, it's purely up to you as to where you want them to go. Um, and I don't think any of this tabs in on his back, back here. I don't think any of that tabs in. So, uh, it's just holds with friction and just stays there and he's kind of got a butt flap going on. So. Uh, now the figure itself, of course, is a headmaster. You can turn his head left and right. You don't get the full 360. The sides of the head actually hit his shoulder pauldrons here. Um, uh, he gets, he has a double jointed elbow, which is part of the transformation. He does not have a wrist swivel. Uh, both arms are, of course, the same. And he gets out to 90 degrees, almost. Like he's got a little bit of upper shoulder movement, so. You can drop his arm down or up, but in the up position, you almost get 90 degrees. Like you can kind of rub up against the head and get the 90 degrees. So that's not too bad. And then you get all the way around. And of course the other arm's the same. He does have a waist swivel, so he gets all the way around for the waist swivel. Um, he has thigh cut for thigh swivel, and he's got 90 degree knee, just over 90, oh, it's over 90 degrees. Um, for knee joint and of course all the way 90 forward backwards um, he's hindered by the um, head right here so he's not going to get all the way back uh, let's see and he's got an ankle rocker and again they put took the time to put the sculpted detail inside the ankle rocker which is really quite nice um, love the sculpting of the abs and the chest sculpt look really good uh, they did a really good job on this head masterpiece um, so, yeah, really good. And of course, you can't take off the head without taking off the other head. So here we have the headmaster's headmaster, and easy peasy lemon squeezy. So that's about it. He's got his arms are on ball pegs, so he's got a little bit of outward movement, but really not much of anything. Um, legs are molded together so he can go in a seated position um, and that's about it. So no no head movement but the face is painted, eyes are painted and the eyes of the headmaster are painted there. As far as paint on this guy the purple is painted here and he's got some orange paint on the sides. 
and the rest of it's just molded plastic and paint that we've already discussed. Um, so that's about it for the Headmaster and the Headmaster's Headmaster. And looks like all that's left now is getting this dude in scorpion mode. So we're going to go ahead and put the head back together because it's part of the scorpion mode it appears. So we're going to put them back into um, head mode. His feet do, or his legs do tab together right here into those two peg holes. Then the chest pegs into the holes there. So that together, and that just raises up, that folds back, and then we can plop his ears back on. I don't know how loose his ears are. Really kind of bug me. I feel like those could be tolerance a little better, but. I won't harp on that anymore. All right, so for robot mode, or for scorpion mode, we'll take off those accessories there. We've already taken off the side pieces here. And we've taken off the piece on the back. So now, we're going to rotate the arms up. rotate up and out, head rotates 90 degrees, waist 90 degrees, right. I say 90, 180, 180, I know what I'm doing, I promise, waist is 180 degrees, then we'll go ahead and untab his tail from here. Tab it from here and we'll let it hang down. And it looks like there's a tab. Yep, this tab goes into that hole right there. Supposedly, allegedly. If your waist is lined up correctly, it does. But my waist was not quite lined up correctly, so it had not. Alright, so now the legs come out. heartless that's why it's so evil and then it looks like that pulls it down and so now we're going to lay it on the ground lay it flat on his back like so These flaps were supposed to be laid flat. These open up. These open up this way. Okay, so these lift up. And once those are lifted up, pull the feet in like that. And then these tab back over. these stay out it looks like and then the whole assembly rotates up at the knee the little knee joint because you got you got a little knee joint and then you got a big knee joint so the whole assembly rotates up at the knee your toe
toe tilts fold in. And then it looks like everything kind of collapses down this way. These tab in down on the side shows shows this peg hole here. It's this tab back here. So it feels like that one go. There might be a little movement that needs to happen here. So we're going to flip it around. So it's this peg hole goes into that hole right there. And so it just like it might feel like it's binding a little bit here. Sometimes this comes untabbed. It came untabbed on the other side. Um, so. push it back in and then it all just kind of goes in and there's nothing really holding this together here that I can see I'm looking but I don't see any kind of permanent tabbing system right there and it doesn't look like there's anything here so with this spun around these on the tail tab into these here that are under the kneecap on the thigh portion of the robot. And then it looks like yep, it says this should be in a Z formation, which it is. And then this piece folds down. The instructions say you do it after this point, but you should probably do it before. That part folds down, and then this folds out, and then this folds out, and then this folds out. So, let's see, on this side now, we're going to spin it back this way, the legs. Up there and there, and then the guns can go back on the shoulders here and here. So I think technically that's the back side of the shoulder now. here snap back apart and it looks like this one tabs on to this side you've got hole here here and then I think this goes into one of these here so let's see nope it doesn't go into any of those so it's just these two holes up here hold it in from doing it again on this side. These two tabs go into these two holes here. And you just hold it. Alright, and let's see if there's a home for this. This lives on the back side of the tail, according to the instructions. It says that it goes right down here. Kind of the same peg holes it, it was in beforehand. 
and it just goes back there. So, and that's it. That's that's scorpion mode, man. That's that's pretty dang big, yo. So, uh, I do wish these barrels kind of articulated up, uh, so that you can get the pincers down, pincers, claws, whatever you want to call them. But, yeah, man, this is pretty cool. I love this mode. It is ginormous. I have, or I used to have the original G1 Scorpionock. I think I sold it um, a while back. Yeah, I know I did. I sold it a while back. Um, I think the thing that bummed me out about it the most was all the chrome had been worn off of it and everything. So, yeah, I sold it a while back. But, uh Man, this is this is a great rendition of it. Um, the face looks menacing here, uh, of course, with his mandibles, and then um, he's got painted eyes. That was part of the torso um, paint on the side in robot mode, and uh, of course, all the other paints pop through. You know, you got your silver paint on your pieces and their blues and all that stuff, and uh, blast effects tab onto his tail. So he can make it look like he's shooting um, from his tail. Just like that. And he's got a peg up here at the top, so if you want to add a gun. Now, the bummer about his tail that I just did is, um, even though it's tabbed in, like there's no further articulation for the tail. So... Technically, this is all the movement you get is right here. He ain't stabbing nobody. The tail cannot come over like a scorpion normally can. And I can't remember if the G1 did or not. I don't think it did. Um, so I'd say it's on par with the G1's ability to do that. Um, as far as scorpion mode goes, the tail should be a bit more epic as far as its size and all that. But as far as Hasbro and the toy is concerned, I get that this is kind of like as good as it's going to get and uh, which is fine it, it holds the part just fine um, the figure looks wonderful you can see the Decepticon emblem on top and uh, just all in all an absolutely beautiful piece I, I'm kind of <laughs> taken aback by it so uh, man I really dig it I'm going to bring it a little closer I, I mean granted you can see it all from back there but just like the face you can really make out the face with these three dots right here. Um, and just the way it looks as a composition is really good. Um, Beautiful example of engineering um, and how far we've come from G1 to now. And I couldn't be happier with the figure. I think it's beautiful and uh, really fits the bill. So now on to city mode. This whole back page is dedicated to city mode. Uh, well, hold on, hold on a hot second here. I could pop the head off and let him ride in there. I can take the, well, apparently the head can come off and ride in the middle section now. Say the head, the, the headmaster head, come off and this lift forward. like it says that the head would stay in place. The head does stay in place without the headmaster's head. And move him into the outstretched seated mode. A 
does tab in. So where we're talking about him tabbing in at is his little foot part right there tabs into this little hole here, just like that. And then this closes over him. So now I guess that allows him to pilot Scorpionot and Scorpion. And all this tabs back together. I'm not going to go back to that tabbing real quick because I'm about to undo it all again anyway. So now with that there, we're going to take these back off. We're going to take these off. And we're going to take the shield claw thing off the back. Move it over here. And the head's going to come off. And we're going to hold these feet flat. And it looks like the tail itself folds back. And then, yep, it's going to fold in there and fold down. And it looks like all this folds back around. Like it normally was, you untab it and you fold this piece back flat. So you get your tail back to the way it was when he was in robot mode. And then we're gonna untap, keep these tabs un undone. We're gonna lift the legs up back to 90 degrees. And then it looks like they swivel out 90 degrees. Then let's see, what does that part say? These flaps fold up to a point. And then the legs actually fold. Let's see. Forward on the looks like thigh swivel. We, or no. The whole thing rolls forward. And down. And down. Let me spin this around so that can see what I'm doing. So, this all rotated at the crotch area instead of the thigh swivel. Um, and then they go down at an angle according to the instructions. And these should still be up. And then the thigh swivel rotates up. And then that rotates flat. go back flat and they actually tab in this see it just pops right off that peg which it, I think it's meant to, to do that just so that you know if you apply too much pressure it doesn't actually break the tab so that doesn't bother me I mean I think that's decent enough okay then this side does the same thing. And they just go 90 degrees up to the leg. And on the foot, there's actually a little tab that comes out here. And it looks like you got you got a double hinge here. So this is so it's up and clean. And and you rotate that double hinge down so it'll actually touch the ground. We'll do that for both sides. So this is the bottom of the foot that does this. So now you have your, your ramp up and across and down. And then just like in, 
I say just like in scorpion mode. This actually tabs in. Looks like using this middle tab here tabs into its crotch area right there. And it does. It doesn't make a, a substantial click, but you can feel it. You can't hear it, but you can feel it. And then the arms rotate up. shield pieces in to the barrel of the guns and these attach here it says it attaches there Okay, so you want this peg, this peg, and this hole, and this hole to go on that peg, that peg, that hole, that hole. Like that. One more time for the other side. And there's that. And this lifts back up. There's our dude from earlier. this, these two pegs, peg into these two holes here. And let's see. It says that lifts up there. Covers there. And then the head actually goes inside. Stores in there. So there's a place to keep the head. And that covers down. And that's it. That's city mode. And of course, you can attach all the city modes together. And uh, say city mode, base mode, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, they all attach together. And uh, I say that's a pretty accurate representation. Of Scorponok. Uh, it looks just as good now as uh, he did in G1, if not even better. Um, pretty impressive. Takes up a lot of table space. So, city modes, you know, if, you're, if you have the ability to display your bots in city mode, I'd say you're pretty fortunate. Um, I don't have that kind of space, at least not at this current point in time. But he's a big bot and he takes up a lot of room. And that is really awesome. I really dig this figure. So, uh, anyway, this is my review of the Earthrise Scorponok. And, again, this was gifted to me by my brother Tony. And, man, I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, pretty awesome gift. Um, leave your thoughts, comments, um, your opinions on the figure, your likes, your dislikes, um, in the uh, comment section. And... Uh, I'll be back with part two. Part two will be the um, DK19 and DK21 upgrade kits uh, for this figure. So we'll go over install and um, we'll unbox it, go over the install and uh, anything else that it entails. So thank y'all and see you soon. Bye.